Welcome back to Blockchain Pill. My name is Alex and in this new video series, we are going to take complex ICP terms or complicated ICP terms and we're going to try to break them down because listen, I have a list here of technical ICP terms that I'm sure that nobody besides, you know, Definity or developers really understand what they mean. So for example, we have like threshold cryptography, vet keys, Schnorr signatures. What the hell is a Schnorr signature? chain key cryptography, bill less signatures, and the list goes on and on and on. And listen, we're not developers. I would bet that the vast majority of people watching my videos are not developers. So in this series, I'm gonna take those terms, you know, one by one and try to break them down in easy to understand language so that you and myself as well are gonna more easily understand what those crazy terms are and why they're such a big thing. Because if you are not able to understand what those mean, it's just, you know, you, you read them, you repeat them to somebody else and you hope for the best. This is going to be an educational series. We've heard Dominic Williams say time and time again that ICP is the third big innovation in crypto after Ethereum and after Bitcoin. So first of all, let's find out why Bitcoin and Ethereum were the first and the second big innovations. And today we're gonna find out how ICP is building on top of Bitcoin and on top of Ethereum to bring the third big innovation in crypto. So first of all, Bitcoin was the first time in history that people could send money across the internet without needing a third party or a middleman. And this was a big thing because before Bitcoin, you always had to trust a third party like PayPal or Visa or your bank to move funds. And Bitcoin flipped this model. It created a peer to peer digital cash system where you and I could transact directly. And this was a massive innovation because it solved a big problem, which was the double spending problem. The risk that the digital money could be copied just like you copy a file on your computer. Thanks to Bitcoin's blockchain, every transaction is recorded, secure and cannot be reversed. That's why Bitcoin is often called digital gold. It is a store of value that's censorship resistant, borderless and scarce. After Bitcoin came Ethereum as the second big innovation, Ethereum took Bitcoin's foundation and asked what if money could follow rules automatically? Instead of just sending and receiving, you could program money to do things when conditions are met. And that is what smart contracts are. Pieces of code on the blockchain that execute automatically. For example, you can lock funds in a lending contract and it pays out interest without a bank. You can trade tokens on a decentralized exchange without a broker. You can mint NFTs, which are unique digital assets that can be bought and sold globally. And why was this a big innovation? Well, for a couple of reasons. This turned blockchains from just payment networks into full-blown programmable platforms. Ethereum created a foundation for DeFi, NFTs, and DAOs, which is basically the entire Web3 ecosystem that we know today. But there is a catch. Ethereum smart contracts are powerful, but they are also limited. They cannot easily scale. They rely on external servers for things like hosting websites, and every interaction costs users gas fees. Imagine telling your friends about a platform and every time they try to do something on the platform, they have to pay, you know, a few cents or a few dollars, depending on how congested the network is. We wouldn't use email or any platform for that matter if we had to pay every time we do a thing. And now comes the third big innovation, which is ICP. It isn't just another smart contract chain. It solves the biggest problems that Ethereum left open. Scalability, cost, and most of all, reliance on Web2 infrastructure. On Ethereum, an app smart contract might live on chain, but the front end, which is the website, UI, database, images, usually sit on Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud. ICP allows developers to run everything on chain, backend, front end, and the data storage. This means that a dApp on ICP is a self contained app with no centralized parts. Think of canisters as smart contracts 2.0 or smart contracts on steroids. Ethereum smart contracts are like calculators. They're powerful, but limited. ICP's canisters are like cloud servers. They can store data, run complex logic, and scale as apps grow. This makes it possible to build apps like social networks, chat apps, and even AI systems directly on the blockchain. Another thing that ICP introduced is the reverse gas fee model. As I mentioned before, on Ethereum, every user interaction requires them to pay gas. On ICP, developers preload canisters with cycles, which is basically the gas on ICP. So 
end users interact without fees or wallets popping up. Apps feel as smooth as Web2, but run on decentralized infrastructure. ICP can directly interact with Bitcoin and Ethereum without bridges. With CKBTC and canisters, ICP is unlocking true Bitcoin DeFi for the first time, which is something that Ethereum couldn't do in a safe way. ICP scales horizontally, which means that more subnets equal more capacity. This means that it can support internet scale applications and not just small DeFi protocols like DEXs or lending protocols. We literally have social media platforms running entirely on the ICP blockchain. We have OpenChat, which is a chat app similar to Discord or Telegram running entirely on the internet computer protocol. Every single message that people send in those chat groups, they are crypto transactions. You can DM your friends crypto, you can run raffles inside OpenChat and so on and so forth. This wouldn't be possible if the app was not hosted on the ICP blockchain. Circling back to the three big innovations, Bitcoin proved that money can live outside banks, Ethereum proved that code can control money, and ICP proves that the entire internet can run on blockchain infrastructure, making apps that are unstoppable, censorship resistant, and scalable. This is why many see ICP as the third big innovation in crypto history, the moment where blockchains go beyond finance and become the foundation for a decentralized internet. So now that we got that out of the way, let's zoom in on canisters and see how they work. Think of a canister as a supercharged smart contract. It's not just code, a canister bundles the program logic, which is what the app does, with the data it stores like user accounts, posts, transactions, images, and everything else. This means that a canister is more like a mini server on the cloud, except it doesn't run on Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud, it runs directly on the blockchain. And unlike traditional blockchains, ICP doesn't separate storage and logic, they both live inside the canister. When you deploy a canister, it gets hosted across the ICP's decentralized network of nodes and anyone can interact with it by calling its functions. Canisters don't just power ICP native apps, they're also unlocking Bitcoin DeFi in ways that were not possible before. Here is how. ICP has direct integration with the Bitcoin blockchain. It's not a wrapped token or a bridge. It's native Bitcoin functionality inside canisters. That means that developers can build DeFi apps that use real BTC without leaving the security of the Bitcoin network. For example, projects like Odin Fund that are using ICP tech in the background to enable almost instant Bitcoin run transactions, that works through CKBTC, which is a cryptographic twin of Bitcoin that runs on ICP but is always backed one-to-one -one by real Bitcoin. This unlocks a whole new world of Bitcoin DeFi, from lending to trading to new experimental apps, all powered by canisters. And I've talked about Bitcoin DeFi on this channel over the past couple of weeks and how projects like Odin Fund really are changing the game. Because on one hand, you have regular Bitcoin DeFi platforms with transaction times of five to 10 minutes, which is insane. Nobody will wait 10 minutes to do a run transaction. And on the other hand, you have Odin Fun with nearly instant transaction times thanks to leveraging the ICP tech stack. So if Bitcoin was about digital money and Ethereum was about programmable money, then ICP is about a decentralized internet where apps live entirely on-chain. Canisters are not just smart contracts, they are the building blocks of a new generation of apps from decentralized social media to DeFi protocols that finally bring real Bitcoin into play. And I'm hearing a lot of other projects like Ada Cardano claiming that it is going to be the Bitcoin DeFi layer sometime in the future. Listen, this is happening right now thanks to ICP. The internet computer is pushing blockchain into its third era. If you want to dive deeper into what canisters can do and what people are building using canisters, stick around because we're just scratching the surface. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this type of video where we try to break down complex ICP terms or topics into more digestible information. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and share it with a friend to help them understand more about ICP. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.